for a few moments, things seemed great. Maybe not perfect, but things were going really well. I had completed the initial steps of showing my prospective customers this gorgeous Ford F-150 Platinum pickup truck. In baseball terms, it seemed as though we were rounding third and heading home with this transaction because they, all of the buying signs were there. Now here's what I knew. So as part of my sales process, I pointed out the features in this specific vehicle, tied them to the benefits to them of owning this vehicle. By the time I finished this part, number one, they were so excited about the possibility of owning the quintessential hauler of the free world. Number two, they trusted my dealership. And number three, I got a sense that they kind of agree with my mom, my 84-year-old mom who tells all of her gal pal friends at Walmart that I'm the number one car salesman and they should go buy a car from me. So we sat down and I began to work through the sales menu with them. And that's when it happened. Ba-bam! Objection. During my long career, I've sold everything from real estate to forestry equipment, from right-of-way services to timeshare, from handmade furniture to cars, yes, to cars. And all in all, I've sold a little over $21 million worth of products and services. And here's what I can tell you, without a doubt, on each of the several hundred transactions that I've been involved in over my career, not once did I ever go from beginning to end without encountering an objection from the customer. It's going to happen every single time. So the question is, are you good at guiding your customers through objections? Today, we're going to take a look at five steps to handling objections. These are proven. And I've got a really unique and exciting way to learn these steps. In fact, this method of learning is over 2,500 years old, and I'm gonna teach it in a way that it's never been taught before. You're gonna like this, and the best part is, it's fun, and you're not likely to ever forget it once you go through this training. And best of all, you will close more sales because you'll be able to help your customers get through the objection phase. Okay, so in this training, I'm going to give you five steps for handling objections. Also in this training, you are going to get six word tracks that correspond with the six most common objections that you get when you sell cars, all right? So, what I'm going to do here, first of all, is I'm going to give you five words that will help you remember the five steps. So, the first word or the first phrase that I want you to remember is gold medal. All right, gold medal. Just imagine a gold medal in your mind. Number two, imagine a two ton car lift. Two ton car lift. You know, just like the kind you see right there in your service bay area, right? For, lifting cars up and uh, doing uh, work on them. All right, number three is question marks. A lot of question marks, all right? Number four is imagine two school children sitting at a desk with their hands raised, all right? Two school children with their hands raised. Number five is two thumbs up, all right? We see that a lot for movies. Two thumbs up was a great movie. All right, so do you remember the five things now? Number one, gold medal. Number two, car lift. Number three, question marks. Number four, two students sitting there with their hands raised. And number five, two thumbs up. Okay, so now we have the five words that are the outline for our five steps for handling objections. Now, how do most people go about learning? Well, they use the rote method, which is just basically memorization. The problem with that is there's a tendency to forget what you've memorized. And number two, it just takes a lot longer to learn that way. So I'm gonna show you something now 
that is going to work with the location part of your brain, the spatial part, and this was developed about 2,500 years ago by a Greek philosopher. So what we do is we tie words to locations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create five places on my body. What I want you to do is do this at home or at work or wherever. I know this is going to seem silly, but just go ahead and do it and follow along and see how this works. You'll be glad you did. So number one place I'm going to choose on my body is the top, my head, all right? Number two is my nose. Number three is my mouth. Number four are my ears. And number five is my larynx. Okay, so let's repeat those again. The top, my nose, my mouth, my ears, and my larynx. Got it? Top, nose, mouth, ears, larynx. Now the way our brains work, we have the tendency to remember things better by what location they're in. So let's begin taking the things and assigning them to locations. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to take the gold medal and we're going to place that on top of our heads. All right, so there's the gold medal. Now number two, we're going to take that two ton car lift and we're going to cram it up our nose. Now, I know that seems absurd, silly, outrageously stupid, but it's those kinds of pictures, images that you put into your brain that'll make it remember these things. So just cram that two-ton two car lift up your nose. Number three was the mouth. What we're going to have there is the question marks. We're going to sign question marks. So just imagine question marks just coming out of my mouth like crazy and out of your mouth like crazy, and they kind of tickle. They're almost like bubbles, just question marks and question marks. Number four was our ears, right? We are going to assign the school children sitting at desks with their hands raved as in, pick me, pick me, pick me, right? Remember those days in school? And number five is our larynx. And for the larynx, we are going to assign two thumbs up. Remember, two thumbs up. I can only do one because I'm holding the camera with the other hand. So. Let's go over that again. So on the top of our head, we have gold medal. The nose, oh, that's easy. Cram a two-ton car lift up your nose. Number three was our mouth. We have question marks coming out. Number four was our ears. School children, side of our, on both sides of our ears, at, sitting at desk with their hands raised. Pick me, pick me. And number five, two thumbs up at our larynx. So let's see if you can do this on your own. Number one, top, what did you choose? Number two was the nose. Number three, your mouth. Number four, your ears. And number five, your larynx. Good job. So, Let's see if you can do this backwards. All right, so the larynx. What do we have at the larynx? Two thumbs up. The ears, school children, the mouth, question marks, the nose, two ton car lift going up our nose, and the top of our head, gold medal. Great, you know this forwards and backwards. See how easy this is going? And you're beginning to wonder, what has this got to do with handling objections? We're gonna to get to that. So the best way to learn things like this is not verbatim. It's to use imagery and associations. That's the way the mind works the best and how you can remember things better. And this is gonna really play in later on. You think about it, as you're looking at your customer across the table, you can look at the top of their head and immediately remember gold medal. You can look at their nose and remember two-ton car lift up their nose, right? You remember their mouth, question marks, number four, school children, number five, two thumbs up. So what does all this mean? Here we go. Number one, the gold medal. Who do, who do we give gold medals to? 
those people that we want to acknowledge. This is the first A, this is the first word, acknowledge. So that when a customer comes at you with an objection, don't blow it off, don't start arguing with them, acknowledge their concern, acknowledge their objection. People want to feel understood, they want to feel like they've been heard. So the first part, the first element, the first step in handling an objection is to acknowledge. Acknowledge, we acknowledge people by giving them gold medals. You wanna give your customer gold medal service. Acknowledge their complaint, their objection, their concern. Number two, we had the two-ton car lift going up the nose. Well, what is a car lift used for? Well, the car lift is used for front end alignments, you guys, and the car industry should have gotten it right away, right? It's for front end alignment or a line. So the first step in handling objection is acknowledge. The step two is align. So what this does is it puts us on the same side with the customer. I'm not necessarily saying you have to agree with what the customer says because contrary to popular opinion, the customer is not always right. All right, there I said it. Some of you aren't gonna like that. But here's how I feel about it. The customer is always served. We do this by aligning ourselves. So we put ourselves in a similar situation. We say we understand that makes sense. I would feel concerned about that. I feel concerned about that when I go to buy a car too. All right, you see the difference there. Rather than backing up and trying to be defensive or trying to argue with our customers, we acknowledge, then we align. So front end alignment, gold medal, we got acknowledge, we got align. All right, number three, question marks coming out of the mouth. When you think of a question mark, what do you associate with a question mark? Ask. So the third A in five steps of handling an objection is ask a question. So we acknowledge, we align, and then we ask them a question. So the question might be something like this. Other than the payment, do you have any other concerns? Do you see how it isolated? So now they'll say, well, no, it's just the monthly payment. Everything else seems fine. Or they may say, well, yeah, the down payment, the interest rate, the overall price of the car, the color, everything. They might throw a whole bunch of, of objections on the pile at that point, but you'll never know that unless you ask. So acknowledge, gold medal, align, alignment rack. Number three is question mark, ask. And no okay, so the fourth A is, you ready? We got the ear, we got two school children on each side. They raised their hands saying, pick me, pick me. What do they want to provide? The answer. So we acknowledged our customer. We, we aligned ourselves with them. We asked the question and now we give them an answer. So in this answer, the first thing we want to do is we want to restate their objection to us in our own words back to them. Now there's three things that this is going to do. Number one is it's going to show that you were paying attention. You were listening carefully. You are going to gain their trust. You are going to gain their respect when it shows that you were actually listening. It shows that you care. Now, number two, you are going to gain agreement with them because at the end of the restatement, you say, is this what you were saying? They're going to say, yes, that's exactly what I was saying or no and they're going to clarify. So either way is good because we're moving forward and we're moving forward without any confusion. And number three is it shows that you're confident. People want to buy things from people that are confident. Do not confuse cocky with confident. People don't like to do business with cocky people. Confident in that you know your product and that you know where you're leading them. Do you want to follow somebody that doesn't know where they're going? No, neither does your customer. So know how to guide them through the journey with these five steps. So let's repeat them. What does the gold medal stand for? Acknowledge. The alignment rack? Uh, duh, align, right? Number three was the question mark. Ask. Number four, 
answer. So when you're giving the answer, just refer to the six word tracks that I've provided in this training and you'll have all kinds of answers. Okay, so we've got one left. It's the larynx. And we put what in front of the larynx? Two thumbs up. Now what do two thumbs up mean? I agree. So that is the fifth word. Acknowledge, align, ask, answer, agree. So all you have to simply do at the end of, of your answer is just to say which payment option works best for you. And when they choose, bingo, you just made a sale. And that's how you get through the objection process. Six word tracks, you can download them on this page. Just click the button below this video. You can start working on them. And you'll always remember now, acknowledge, align, ask, answer, agree. Are we in agreement? Okay, so let's go sell more cars, right? Now, would you do me a huge favor? Would you go down below and comment? Tell me how much this training meant to you, how much you like it, all right? And also, make sure you click on the button, download the six word tracks that you can begin using immediately. And drop me an email. My email, my contact number is on this page as well, and I'd love to hear from you. And be on the lookout. We're going to be sending out some more trainings over the next few weeks. One of the trainings I'm really excited about is four ways to sell a car via the phone without making a call. We're going to use modern technology, and you're going to love it. It's free. You can use it. And I used it a lot when I was working for the dealership I came from before I started with CF Search Marketing. And I sold lots of cars. I got lots of people to come into the showroom without ever having talked to them on the phone first. It's amazing. You're going to love this training. All right. Be good. Talk soon. Good day.